you know, what is the, either the biggest problem or the problem that you've chosen to focus on in the near future with regard to uh, trust in tech? And Alex, let's start with you. Yeah, so uh, my focus for my entire career has been kind of adversarial use of tech to cause harm. Um, traditionally, that's a big, a long set of words, meaning like, meaning bad guys doing bad things with computers. Yeah, and so <laughs> bad guys doing bad things with computers used to be kind of constrained to this traditional hacker mindset, breaking the computer, stealing information, and such. Uh, and now what we're dealing with is a much broader set of kind of human harms of bad things that have all happened in the real world, but that are made easier, that happen at larger scale, that are perhaps harder to find bad guys when done online. Okay. Can I take a second to respond to Dr. Williams? I would love that. I got, uh, <laughs> yes. I felt like you get there. So, you, your old job. My old job, I was the chief security officer at Facebook during the Russian investigation. I ran the investigation into Russian interference in 2016. Um, I actually agree with Dr. Wu that there's not enough competition in Silicon Valley. The, if you look at the 101 freeway in Silicon Valley, it is, uh, lined by the bleached skulls of the companies that have come before, right? Like Facebook famously is actually on the Sun campus. Google's on the SGI campus. And that ecosystem has been disrupted by the size of these big companies and their ability to gather data to figure out who their competitors are. But I am gonna push back a little bit on the idea that just big is bad. I think there's a lot of tech critics who like the idea that it's easy just to be against these companies and that there's no downsides. The truth is, is everything you know about, about Russian interference on Facebook in 2016, everything in the Mueller report, every single thing in there about interference on Facebook, my team found and turned over voluntarily to the government. Government found none of it. We got no help from the US government or any other government really in 2016 and 2017. Um, some of that changed with 2018. And so uh, we have a massive data sampling issue in that we don't actually know what the Russians did in 2016 because the 1,000 other user-generated content sites, the small companies, don't have ex-NSA Russian-speaking counterintelligence analysts like the team I built going and looking for this stuff. And so it's the same thing with Google and Twitter. So we know about Facebook, Google, and Twitter. We don't know about Reddit and Pinterest and 4chan and 8chan and Gab and Vote um, and the New York Times comment section and everything else because they don't have professionals looking at it. And so there is a cost to breaking up the companies. There is a, a true issue here. I don't think that's a reason not to break them up. I think that's a reason to create structures by which a company that is the size of Instagram, a standalone Instagram, has the support necessary to do the right thing, but that, that is a much more complicated trade-off than just the idea that the big companies are bad. The truth is, is Facebook has done more than pretty much any other company or organization in the ecosystem, including the government, and especially including the mass media, it has done more to respond to 2016 than anybody else.